Hello, my name is Nathan Sheffield. I am an assistant professor in the Center for Public Health Genomics at the University of Virginia. And today I want to introduce you to two exploratory projects I've been working on that provide some interesting capabilities relevant to CWL. First, I'll show you some new software to scatter CWL workflows across tabular data. And second, I'll describe a new approach to creating portable interactive computing environments from CWL workflows. Now, both of these projects are in early stages and I'm eager for any feedback or collaboration from anyone who's interested in the community. The first problem that I want to address is the issue of running a CWL workflow on tabular data. In biology, we often encode sample metadata as a CSV formatted sample table, and we often get these tables from our collaborators. So I want to know what's the easiest way to run a CWL workflow on each sample in such a sample table. Now for a single sample, using CWL is straightforward. You have a tool or a workflow file in CWL format, like this one on the left, and then you've got a job file with sample metadata in YAML format, like this one on the right. And you pass the two along the command line, like this, to the CWL runner, and the workflow engine runs your workflow. But things are a little bit more complicated for running multiple samples. And this is where CWL scatter comes in. So you can create a nested workflow like this and then use the scatter command and then list your YAML inputs like this uh, on the right um, from this uh, training from Peter Amstutz on RNA-seq processing. And this is all fine and good and I could restructure my sample table to use this sort of YAML list input format. But what I actually have is a CSV file, a sample table like this, where each row corresponds to a sample. And I just think it would be super convenient if I could somehow just pass this file directly to my CWL workflow. So this is where Looper comes in. To briefly introduce Looper, it is a workflow engine agnostic job submission tool. Looper doesn't actually run workflows. Its sole purpose is to handle creating job scripts from a table of samples like you'd have in a bioinformatics project. Looper reads sample data from a standard format for describing project and sample metadata called PEP. A PEP is very simply a combination of two files. It's a YAML configuration file for project level metadata, and it's a tabular file for sample level metadata. And given this format, Looper allows you to run arbitrary shell commands for each sample or row in the sample table. So we can use Looper to run our table through a CWL pipeline, or really any other workflow engine or tool that we can run from the command line. And we do that by simply passing the config file to Looper run. So to connect Looper to CWL, we simply specify the CWL runner command in a file called the interface file, where we describe the commands that we want Looper to run. Here, we tell Looper to use CWL runner on each sample. And we also specify a, a pre-submission hook. And this is a, a way that you can configure Looper to run arbitrary preparation code before submitting the job. Now, pre-submission hooks can be used, can be entirely customized uh, so that you can run any code that you want. But in this case, we're using a built-in Python function that writes out our sample metadata in a CWL compatible input format. And the only other thing to do is to make sure that the project configuration file in the PEP format specifies the location to the interface file. And to run this project with Looper, we just pass the project configuration file to Looper Run, which creates a CWL workflow job for each sample. It runs directly from the CSV sample table, looping through each row to produce a separate job for each sample. So we can call this a tabular scatterer for CWL. So it may not seem like this is that much different from using the built-in CWL scatterer, and in many ways it's not. Maybe it's a bit simpler to use the tabular data directly because Looper handles the reformatting of the YAML inputs. Uh, but in fact, we also get a few other benefits as well. So for example, because Looper reads an independent standardized format, you can use this format 
as input not only into Looper, but also into Python or R packages that we've developed for this purpose. And PEP is also a native way of describing sample metadata for Snakemake pipelines. So in other words, your single project config file can become a universal source of description for your project, which makes it easier to analyze the output of your CWL workflow because you can load up the sample metadata easily into the analysis environment of your choice using these PEP compatible utility packages, Pepper for R or Peppy for Python. PEP also provides a few other powerful features. You can use project mo modifiers to import settings from other projects or create subprojects that share settings that can be activated on the fly. Sample modifiers allow you to derive new sample attributes and specify paths so that you can make a sample table universal to compute host. And that way it can be reused across uh, individuals in different computing environments or even projects. And finally, a sample validation framework allows a workflow developer to specify the required inputs per given workflow to confirm that a particular PEP is uh, compatible with that particular workflow. If you're interested in learning more, you can read the documentation here. And uh, I'd like to now move on to the second issue. Something that I find myself wanting to do is to have an interactive terminal session within the same computing environment that would run my workflow. So for example, as a workflow developer, say I'm troubleshooting a failed command and I would like to go try running that command again, um, the way it's run in the workflow. Maybe I want to explore a particular interactive step in my workflow, but with a, you know, a different side piece of data that I want to just look at for that step. Or I might want to demo a different approach altogether, but using the same tools that I'm using in a particular workflow. So the question is, how can I run an interactive exploratory analysis at the terminal, but in the same way that it would run if it were running in a workflow? Now, the reason why this is challenging is because of uh, containerization. So one of the really powerful features of CWL is that you can add this Docker requirement. And this enables the workflow to guarantee things work because the author controls the computing environment. And so this is obviously really nice and we gain a lot of benefits from using containers, but it also makes it difficult to debug or design the workflow interactively because to run a standalone command, I need to construct a complicated Docker run statement that may include many arguments, such as volumes to mount, managing user, uh, mapping, or you know all kinds of other potential settings. And anyone who has used Docker has probably run into this issue where you kind of are bogged down in the need to add all these things to each command you run. And needless to say, running these kinds of commands interactively is a pain and it makes it difficult to run ad hoc analysis the same way that a workflow would run it. So this is where Bulker comes in. Bulker is a containerized environment management system that's nice for interactive analysis. It's an attempt to combine the simplicity of using native tools with the robustness and portability of containers. While a native tool uh, has a simple command, it doesn't run in a container, which is not ideal. On the other hand, containerized tools give a lot of benefits uh, of Linux containers, but they have these complicated commands that are less amenable for interactive analysis. So the goal of Bulker is to get the best of both worlds, to make the commands identical to the commands that you would run natively, but actually have those commands running in containers behind the scenes so that you can benefit from the portability and reproducibility advantages offered by containers. So using Bulker is fairly simple. It's a Python package. You install with pip, and after you configure your local host with settings like which general volumes to mount and user maps and things like this, you just load a computing environment by typing Bulker load. Here I'm, I've called it demo. And this prepares all the containers in the environment for use. And then to actually activate the environment, you type Bulker activate, and then now you can execute commands uh, as if the, the, that are included in this environment, as if they were native, but they're actually running inside a container. So I've recently added a new experimental 
function to Bulker call it, called CWL2MAN, which is CWL2 uh, Bulker Manifest. And the idea is to take a CWL workflow as input and create a Bulker Manifest, which is simply a mapping of commands to the images that run them in the workflow. So by passing it a workflow CWL and an output manifest file, we can then pass this manifest file to Bulker Load and then to Bulker Activate and Voila, you can now use native light commands that will run using the same images that those commands would have used in your CWL workflow. So I'd, I'd like to now show a brief demo of this. So let me go to full screen here. Okay, so here's a simple demo. If we take a look at the files that we've got in this directory, there's some YAML files. There's a CSV and a YAML file. Let's take a look into the data directory, and we see that we have some FASTQ files for two samples, each with two files. So if we look at the demo sample table, we can see that we've got two rows, one corresponding to each sample. These are RNA-seq samples. And you can notice that I haven't actually put the input file paths in there yet. This is a feature of PEP that I didn't talk about um, that I'm just showing you here that we can basically add derived attributes which will construct these file paths. And so this is what the project configuration looks like. So the CSV file and the YAML file together form the, conf the project config file. And that file pointed to the CWL interface, which looks like this. Here we have the CWL runner command that's showing that we're gonna um, call the BWL tool, BWA tool file. And we have the pre-submission hook here calling the right sample YAML CWL. So let's take a look now at the BWA tool file, which is your basic CWL file. It's got three inputs, input file one, input file two, and index. And notice here that it's also got a Docker requirement showing you that this is the Docker container that this particular CWL tool is going to run in. So now let's go ahead and run this project by, by calling looper run and passing it that project config file that we just looked at. And you can see here that looper is going to just go through each sample one at a time, create the YAML uh, files for CWL, and then call CWL runner. And these have both succeeded. But now say I want to troubleshoot something here. So what if I want to look at what BWA is doing and just run a little test. I can't run BWA directly because I don't have it installed here, right? I would need to do Docker run. So this is where we get to where Bulker might be useful. So if I type Bulker CWL to man and pass it the CWL file and then give it a manifest, then I can create this manifest. But what's really in that manifest file? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. It's a mapping of the command to the image that is going to run that command. So given that manifest, I can load it into a new environment that I call test env. And then I activate it with Bulker activate. And you can see here that my prompt has changed, indicating that I'm now in this Bulker environment. And now if I type BWA here, you can see that I can run BWA. Now it's actually running in the container and it's running in the same container that, um, that the workflow was using for that command. So I hope that gives you a little um, example of how those two things could work in practice and why I think they may be useful. So to summarize, I presented two projects that add some capability surrounding CWL. And both of these projects here are attempts to decouple particular needs into separate standalone tools because I think that that adds power and flexibility. So first, PEP and Looper provide a way to isolate a task of organizing sample input metadata. They let you build arbitrary jobs with dedicated tooling that is not tied to a specific workflow framework. So you can use it with CWL, of course, but you can also use the same metadata <clears throat> management system, even if you're working with a collaborator who uses something else or for your downstream analysis. So in a similar vein, Bulker decouples the computing environment from the workflow. Now, it's clearly useful to be able to provide containerized computing environments that include multiple containers for use in a CWL workflow. But with the Bulker approach, I'm basically saying that it may also be useful to use that same multi-image computing environment independent of the workflow. 
such as for an interactive analysis. So this approach also opens the possibility of easily reusing that set of container images across multiple workflows and managing the images independently of the workflow. So to close, I'd like to thank the contributors to these projects, both within my lab and outside it, and also to the funding sources <coughs> for their support. So thanks for listening, and I'd love to answer any questions or uh, discuss further with anyone who's interested.